Tuhan is born in the community. No, it's is a gift. And for our Dr. Joyce, what I know, I believe that when she was born, Sorry, I think maybe you can maybe you can switch off your video so we can share the bandwidth. James, I think the audio is buffering. So we can try okay. without. Yeah. Yeah. Please continue. Okay, are we clear now? Yes, yes, we can hear you loud yes. and clear. Thank you. Okay, I'm saying we are that we have you, Madam. Uh, Dr. Joyce Wagai Bumi in our community. So, as I was saying, I have to our community. We, we that, that's a gift to us. And as I said earlier, when you were born, I believe not very many years ago, eh? I believe it's in a genetic, and your parents gave you that name. Wagari, I don't know if it's the dog for now. Wagari, you know, in our direct translation, Wagari means Areopades. So I believe that name was not by mistake. I believe it was like a prophecy of the woman that this girl, when she grow up, will become. I really, I, I really with a no giving up spirit, you know, a go getter a beauty, both physically and intellectually. So we are very much excited to have you and everybody now who is together with us. I wish to welcome you officially to this occasion so that now we may begin. Yes. So we know, yes. I hope we are all here in celebration of the And before we start, uh, I wish to this time to inform you. You can still send in your gift, maybe to her. I am personal, but I believe it's open and empty so that we can be able to feel it as we celebrate together. So, and you can also send your messages of goodwill and congratulations via the link that you will be provided or was up. So everybody kindly feel welcome as we continue. At this time, I would wish to give the chance to family representative. If there is any who is around at least, he or she can wave at us and uh, take the floor and give the remarks as a family representative. I see my sister in the house. Um, I'd like um, to invite her. That is uh, uh, Diana Wanchiko. If she does not mind, she can say something. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm on the road, but I think I can I can hear all of us. So am I to speak now, Wangar Dr. Wangari? Yes. Congratulations. Yes, please say something. You have up yes, to five yes. minutes. So keep five talking. minutes. So, <laughs> so today is a very amazing day. Congrats, Wangari. Dr. Wangari. It's so proud, my young sister. You know, now I, I'm feeling so blessed and happy and just Thanking you, Wangari. You've been a great leader. You've mentored. Uh, I've seen so many mentors, you know, mentees of yours, and you have done so, so much. And I think this is a great uh, uh, encouragement. Today, we're even graduation with the nieces, my nieces and nephews. And one niece specifically said, Dr. Wangari, you know, she now doesn't do first class. She's like, you know, Dr. Wangari has gotten a first class. Ata Mimi Ntapata first class. So I think you are really an encouragement. And she's so young, she's 11. Yeah, so that is so nice. And Wangare, congratulations. Ali, li, 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 li. <laughs> and I'm so happy. So I don't have much to say. I'm on the road, but I am here and listening. Thank you so much. Congrats. Yeah. Ali, li, 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 li. Yes. Thank you so much, my sister. You have been my peer reviewer of all my drafts, actually, in my research. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Sana. Back to you, our MC. 
Jane. I'm sorry, I think you need to move, maybe locate where the in network is the best in your location and then um and then see if it will the audio will improve but uh we can hear you but the voice is cutting off try again i'm asking whether we have another representative in the house right now yeah i think we are yeah. done with the family but of course we can give everybody a chance as people coming in if they want to say anything, I think you can proceed to the next group. Okay, now the next group we have remarks from professors or mentors. So if there is any who is in the house that they can take the floor, we appreciate uh, your sister who has actually given very positive remarks and encouraged you as a mentor. Yes. So if there is any Professor or a mentor in the house, why did he take the floor? I see my teacher, Mrs. Joyce Dairo. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. I, I don't know whether you're able to see me. I'm very excited. My name is Joyce Dairo. Congratulations, Dr. Wagari. Thank you so much. We are so, so proud of you. This is a big day. We, we are happy. Personally, I'm very excited. Uh, my journey with Dr. Wagari, I have to learn to call her Dr. Wagari. My journey with Dr. Wagari started um, a long time ago in the early 90s. Uh, of course, I met Dr. Wagari and her three sisters uh, in Kenyatta University where her parents were, were, were lecturers and I was an undergraduate student. Uh, her parents were living in the staff quarters and one day I saw an advertisement that they were looking for a tutor. Uh, and of course I took up the opportunity and applied and I was their tutor for about a, an year. And it was always a joy to interact with the, with the four girls who were very brilliant and uh, hardworking. And I must say that they were also very musical. They used to play for me music, musical instruments after our sessions. Uh, and uh, long after, I was attending a, a, a research workshop uh, in Gracia Gardens in 2019. And during uh, the breakaways, I interacted with this uh, young lady and we started talking and uh, I realized that this is one of the girls that I, I, I taught in my, you know, in uh, my early years. And I was so, so excited to connect with Dr. Wagari again at a personal level. And uh, it felt like, you know, somebody connecting with their, with, their, <laughs> with their daughter. That is the feeling I got after so many years of being apart. Um, she actually introduced me to the journal club. It is through her invitation that I joined journal club. And I must say that uh, it has been a very exciting journey. Uh, learning mainly from her, she, she has been like the pillar, one of the pillars together with um, Aurelia Monene of journal club. Actually, without uh, Dr. Joagari and uh, uh, Aurelia Monene, I don't think we would be having a um, uh, a journal club. So she she has been very very instrumental, uh, very very instrumental uh, in the in the journal club. And I must say, I I would describe uh, Dr. Wagari as a very hardworking lady, very diligent and open minded, a person who is so passionate about making contributions into the lives of other people because I must notice that uh, she has been keen, even spearheading uh, mock defenses for many of the PhD students. And that is something worth commendation. Even as we celebrate her today, I must say that this is a very unique lady. She, she has done well. She, we are very, very proud of her. And uh, Dr. Wagari, you are headed places. 
the kind of attitude I have seen in you, the kind of, um, uh, you know, you're so knowledgeable, you're willing to help. Those are actually attributes that we, we, uh, we really appreciate in you, something that we also call the 21st century skills. And these are the skills that will take you places. So we have, I'm very, very excited to see my daughter. <laughs> I allow me to call you my daughter today. Uh, my student uh, graduating with a doctorate, and it is a joy. I had today, early in the day, I decided to Google her. Uh, please also try doing that. You'll be amazed at the work she's doing, and uh, it's worth commendation. So may the Lord bless you. May he take you to places that you um, may not even think about. So I also want to appreciate uh, the sisters, I was hopeful that I'll be able to see them. Uh, of course, I've met Dr. Wajiko in one of the journal club meetings, and I was thinking I'll meet the other girls and connect with them, and I know it will happen very soon. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Edmenta to Dr. Joyce Wagari. We are very much pre pressured to have you and to and you giving your remarks. So if there is any other professor or a mentor to a guy in the house, they can take the floor. I see a few more. Uh, I just saw my other sister coming in after uh, our mom, Joyce Dairo. <laughs> if you want to say something, I know I'm taking you back our MC to family. Mombi, if you want to say a few remarks, you're very welcome because uh, just a few minutes ago, our teacher who used to tutor us when we were all babies. Yes, I am. So um, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I am so happy to celebrate with you, Joyce, today. Uh, I'm this talking is... about... Oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I had some technical difficulties joining, but um, this is uh, an, a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, you've worked so hard, and we are immensely proud of you. Um, and so you started this journey in higher education in 2006, right? And it's been quite a long journey and now you've made it and we can be proud of you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Yes, and then um, for... So Joyce from a young age was always so studious and to be able to celebrate with her today is, is just the culmination of, you know, all the hard work, her joy of books. Um, when she was young, um, Ernest, you all didn't mention that uh, she was young, she would come home from, she'd come home from school and just hide in the bedroom <laughs> at the end of the semester and the, at the end of the term. And I would go to her room and ask her, you know, how did you do? We would all ask her, how did you do? And she would just say, oh, okay, I think. And then you'd look at her report card and oh my, <laughs> all A's. Um, yeah, so very studious. She, she just loves books. She loves to read. And she will just read a book and just absorb it in a way I've never seen before. Um, and so, you know, right now her love for mentorship, you know, um, all the webinars she hosts, attest to that love of uh, mentorship and love for research and love for helping others, you know, her, her, her heart of, you know, of gold and you know, philanthropy, community service. It's just part of Joyce's DNA. Um, and we are so, 
yes, so, so proud of her. Um, and, and also, when I think of Joyce, I think of, you know, her name, Joyce, you know, source of joy to all around her. Um, and such a blessing, such a blessing. And, um, and also Joyce, you know, is, you know, not only the face of joy, the face of mentorship, the face of friendship to all of you present today, celebrating with her, also the face of resiliency, you know, talk of resiliency is Joyce's middle name. <laughs> she gets down and gets back up in, in a way that I've not seen anyone do before. Um, and so I'm, I'm very proud of her for that. Um, and, and I want to just say congratulations for achieving this doctorate in psychology. I know um, there's so much in store for you in the future because you're awesome. Because not only because you're my sister, <laughs> because you're awesome and you work so hard and all your attributes will carry you forward um, even to higher heights, to whatever your heart desires. I know things, everything will fall in place and in this degree that was earned by a lot of sweat and tears and, <laughs> and ups and downs will, you know, will, will, it has already paid off by you being a mentor to so many, but also will continue to pay off by you being the guiding light for so many people. So Joyce, I, um, I couldn't be more prouder of you today and congratulations and, and as I say, you know, I'm, I feel so bad I'm not there with you because of, you know, different um, work constraints, but we will be celebrating today, tomorrow, all year, uh, because this is a very mighty big day. All right, congratulations. Thank you so much, our eldest sister. And sorry to have taken but I'm so glad I took at least <laughs> after you and I want to be like you and I grow up. <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. <laughs> Congrats. So proud of you. So proud of you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I also you. see another mentor just came in, coming in. Um, Dr. Brown is here. I'm so honored to see her today. So while we are still at the professors and mentors, I know we went back to family, but I'd like to welcome her to say a few who are. Ah, okay. Um, is it, is it, it's my turn or are you still going through some family? Oh, so we had um, completed family. Okay. We went to our professors and mentors, and then my sister came in. So we went back to family. So it's your turn now. <laughs> okay. <your> turn. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, where do I even begin? Um, I want to just first extend. And can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, good. Loud. Um, I yes, just want yeah, to extend you. my biggest congratulations to you on this huge milestone. Um, as I mentioned, where do I begin, Joyce? I moved to Kenya a decade ago um, at the end of 2011. And in early 2012, uh, Joyce was one of the first people I met because she was working tirelessly with some of all of the faculty to um, create this doctoral program. So I feel like she has really been there since the inception of this doctoral program. And those were my first interactions with her, just watching this student who was dedicating time um, and trying to create this program at USIU for the sake of students like herself and um, for the benefit of, of Kenya to have more mental health practitioners and researchers. And so that was my first interaction, which was one where I was just very impressed and uh, since that time, I had the pleasure of then having you as a student uh, when you started in the doctoral program and quickly getting to see just how, as your sister mentioned, diligent you were with your studies, 
um, how curious you were, which always impressed me because you sometimes can't teach that. And there are students who just want to get things done to tick boxes. Um, but Joyce was different and she had a curiosity to her in wanting to understand why things were happening and questioning um, if they didn't make sense or questioning an alternative possibility and just uh, showing a critical mind. And I think a way to think that is going to help her as she moves forward and has, has already helped her in her research career so far. Um, from that time going through the program, I had the pleasure of then supervising you for the dissertation, um, as well as getting to work with you in lab responsibilities and as a, as a researcher and basically managing the lab facility on campus. And so um, I've gotten to just, I've, you know, work with you in so, so many different capacities. It's hard to even know uh, what to touch on, but I have just, yeah, continued to be impressed by your intellect, your creativity, your curiosity, your intense work ethic, um, organization. I am very organized myself. And so to have a student who also handled research responsibilities with the same level of care and organization was a huge um, joy and just benefit to trying to get something like that going at USIU. And I simply could not have done it without you. Um, and then was equally inspired when you started your own dissertation work um, within the deaf community and looking at the questions you answered in that work, just so impactful um, and really inspiring in how you tackled it all. And how you handled feedback, whether it was from external reviewer, you know, external reviewers or internal committee members, you always took it with a level of humility and tenacity to just tackle the revisions. You didn't put up a fight or try to be argumentative, but you just were professional and took any feedback to improve the document and went home and did the work, um, which I think was also so admirable that you just simply wanted to improve the work and make it the best that, um, you know, it could be. And I think, you know, as one of your other supervisors had also mentioned, um, and she's worked at various universities across Kenya, I know she mentioned that uh, your dissertation when you turned it into us as one of the final drafts was one of the best dissertations she said she had seen in Kenya um, across, you know, various institutions. And I think that is, such um, a huge honor and I hope that you recognize how good your work was and how much we esteem everything you've done. Um, so I just want to congratulate you. I cannot wait to celebrate with you in person. Um, and I just want to to thank you for, for the willingness you've had to learn and all the help you provided to me through research activities and your spirit of just wanting to learn and wanting to get in there and tackle tasks when sometimes research tasks aren't always the most glamorous, you know, data entry and things like that are mundane. And I would always tell, you know, you research isn't always a glamorous job, but it needs to be done. That's how we advance science. That's how we create discoveries and invent vaccines and medicines and all the things that people created came from people tirelessly working on, you know, routine kind of tasks, um, but you really tackled all those kinds of responsibilities with such grace. So I just want to congratulate you. Your future is so bright. Um, I hope we will continue to work on things together and I look forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you so much for those kind words, my professor. And it was such a privilege uh, for you to be my first supervisor. I think I took a lot of the organizing skills from you. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, you noticed the same in me and I I'm looking forward to seeing you in person too, <laughs> to extend the celebration. Yes, we will definitely okay. celebrate. I look forward yeah. to it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor, for those remarks. And one thing I have been picking from all those remarks is Dr. Wagari's diligent in studies, you know, and I was just wishing that that spirit of study can also possess me. I meant as well. 
So that one day maybe we shall celebrate together now we've been a doctor in psychology. Okay, so for now, if there is any other professor, we can still give them a chance or a mentor. So is there any other professor? Is there any other professor in the house or a mentor? Maybe you can give them a chance before we proceed. I don't see uh, one who was here and left. So let me see if they can come back, but I think we can go to the next group. Okay. The next group we are going to be taking remarks from peers and colleagues and friends. So if there is any friend in the house who gives us a message of congratulations to Dr. Joyce Wagari. So this is your chance. Kindly you can step up and give your remarks. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Yes, I'm Isaiah Meli, and I would like a moment for you with you. You have been inspiration to me. Isaiah, we, we, we had the first sentence. I'm not sure if the audio disappeared after that. <laughs> Thank you. I think your audio is still buffery, if I'm not wrong. So maybe we can uh, proceed to somebody else and come back to Isaiah later. I see, yes, he's, he got kicked out of the Zoom, but I know he'll be back. I'm sorry, are you, are you getting me now? Hello? Are you getting me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I have got some. Yes, letters. can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. So let me summarize by saying this: that you have been inspiration in my work. I'm also doing the same, not the same course. I'm doing PhD in curriculum, and I've been having inspiration from you. I can remember even some one or two months ago you also came up my place to come and encourage me through my work. And I know I'll continue learning from you. Please, I know the future is very bright for you. You just got another degree, which is the third one. to go. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, congratulations, I'm through. I wish you well. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you have another colleague of faith to do the choice to agree, you can take this opportunity to share with us. Do you have any afraid of the choice to agree? Share yes, I would like to say something for Dr. Wangara, if I may. Yeah, and by Kaziri, actual hand, <laughs> Kaziri, and then Mary. Welcome. Okay, okay. yes. 
Uh, thank you so much. I'm really happy and humbled as well to know Angare, Dr. Joyce. Apart from having the honor today to assist her in interpretation, I'm also humbled and I remember the first day we met, I was doing an assignment and she was really outgoing. And I was like, hey, who is this lady? Since then, she's never let me go and I also will never let her go because I see the passion in you, Dr. Joyce. You always inspire and the change that you make in the community actually. May God bless you for that, for creating more and more leaders in you because you're not a selfish person. What you do builds so many people. And I would just like to say, may God richly bless you, keep you going further and further. And the, the fruits that you bore in this world will not let you down, Dr. Ari. We'll still work hard and also let what you saw did us, those seeds, they'll sprout and grow. Congratulations and Hongera. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other person who would like to share the with us? Hi. Hi, Dr. Wangari. Can Hi. you hear me? Language interpreter. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Nice to see. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, congratulations. It's very nice to see you graduate. Um, yeah, a very hearty congratulations from me. I watched the ceremony online this morning um, for you and my nephew was also graduating uh, with his undergraduate degree. So it was good to see you both. Um, yeah, what a wonderful uh, thing for you to graduate because um, I've watched you go through this uh, for a long time uh, since I was also there while I was a Dr. Brown's student at some point. Um, yeah, so we've done a few things together since then um, as colleagues. So now I look up to you. Um, uh, we look, I look forward to the future and, and all the things that we might do together in the future, but also what you will do, because um, I know how passionate you are about what you've been doing, uh, all the different pursuits you've, you've, um, you've taken on. Uh, and even just your resilience, this um, dissertation I'm hearing that ended up being really good. Um, yeah, you, you've, you've had so many starts and stops. So I really admire your resilience to continue um, and to complete this. So I just wish you all the best. So I... I, I I wouldn't have missed this online meeting for anything. Um, I wasn't even properly dressed for it, but I decided I'm just going to turn on my video <laughs> so that uh, I can just uh, properly say hi to you. Um, yeah, I was kind of winding down my day for today. Uh, but um, yeah, all the best, all the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mary. We won Dumbled almost. But of things with psychology Kenya. Thank you so much, uh, James, our MC. James, can you hear? Oh, yes. we have we have Baraza. We have Baraza, he's uh, signing and it is, will actually voice it. Okay, we can give Baraza a chance. 
Barraza, welcome. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I am Joseph Etiang. I am deaf. I think she's, he's lost. I'm so happy you really encouraged me and motivated me. And in the deaf community, especially indeed, you are the first person in Kenya. I have to echo that in Kenya who knows sign language and is also a psychologist. And in future, I think the deaf also will be happy to have uh, the, uh, when they have their mental issues, they are ready actually to get counseling for the deaf. As a Kenyan deaf person to have had, and I would also want to encourage us, uh, you to continue serving the deaf, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wangare. And also I'm happy because we've been friends. You've motivated me so much. And I believe that our God will bless you more and more. And I'll wish you well as well. Because, and I'm a happy person because here in Kenya, we have got so many people who have got mental issues. And now they have actually you've helped them because through you and your initiative and studying the deaf psychology and mental health, you've given us a lot of support to the deaf group and community. I really commend Dr. Wangare for that. Thank you, Dr. Wangare, and congratulations. I just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for leading my research and uh, for being a research assistant uh, in the study uh, in Nairobi and Kajiado County. So thank you, thank you very much, Baraza. <laughs> Back to you, MC. Okay, Jay, I think the raised hand by. Okay, I didn't know her language. Hello. Hi, Hi Dr. Wangare, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm on transit, but I said I have to be here. I'm very proud of you. And um, from I knew Wangare from high school. Um, and we had quite a number of interactions, um, classmates, Test meets at some point even in the same um, hostel or what we call uh, dormitories. And I'm so happy and I'm so proud to see that the same person who was there at that time, though younger, is the, is the same person we're seeing today. You embody the same qualities, the same values. And um, one thing I think that stood out for us then was your authenticity, which makes you a very unique person. You're not afraid to be yourself and to just. Um, embrace who you are and pursue that which is key for you. Um, I had uh, your school teacher talk about, about music and true to that, you are very musical and you, you, I remember you growing to be the music captain, yeah? And, and you did a thorough job with the music captain and helping the rest of us uh, learn how to do music well. And then our parts have matched, so we have met later now in the Psychology and so glad to see what you do. You are a trailblazer. 
um, one thing that has been very key for me is how you you're already doing a lot before you got the doctorate. She's a she's something very very big. Um, I think you set a very great record. On behalf of Psychologists West Kenya, we are proud of you and we congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you, my high school deskmates. Wangoi Nguni, soon to be doctor also. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Wagari. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all those remarks from peers, colleagues, and friends. If there is any other person kindly, you can still give you a chance, a minute. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Edith Coros. Okay, also I want to say congratulations to Dr. Joyce. Thank I remember you. we met with Joyce one day during Def, I think it was the festival at Safari Park for yeah. Joyce. That was the first oh, time we yes. met her. Until oh. now we see in touch. Thank you so much for not letting me go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that brief remark. Very good. Uh, I didn't know that our doctors would start it. We can use sign language, it's very musical. And also, so if there, is, if there is no other peer, there's another hand by Flo. Somebody has raised their hand, Flo. Yes, good evening yes. and congratulations, <laughs> Dr. Thank John Swangari. Thank you, My Dr. Name Flo, 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 Flo Ambayo. I am so proud of you, appreciating God for your tenacity and also for your resilience, for really fighting through the many battles. Joyce is, uh, has been my classmate for the last uh, so many years. We were together. Uh, we should have graduated together last year, <laughs> but I ended up graduating alone because of a few things that caused her to graduate, to really get her certificate, but walk down the aisle this time. I just am so proud of you and very grateful to God for the help that he has given you. I am also uh, grateful to, to God for just uh, our paths crossing because of how resourceful you are. You are a very, very resourceful person. You are, you know, widely read, very curious, a curious mind, you know, very open, strong values, and really something to admire in you. And thank you for, you know, sharing your, your, your life with us in our class. And with me in particular, you've been a great blessing to me and great support even as we have walked this journey of uh, the doctorate together. I just want to tell anyone that is online that is uh, also working through their doctorate program or planning to, that it is doable. Do not get discouraged, get a support group, get someone to work with you, to help you, to support you as you walk through this journey. We do not have too many doctorates in Kenya as yet. And we need so many in Africa to support our academia, to support the research. And even in therapy for us who are psychologists, who are therapists, you need somebody that has the skills that uh, Joyce has received through this, the, 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 the model that is at USIU, the SID program. So for that one that is there and you are doing your doctorate, uh, just keep working at it. It can be a lonely journey, but it is doable like you have seen, uh, Joyce graduating and the many others that have graduated today. So thank you Joyce again for encouraging many people for the support you've given in the research mentorship and also in the other areas of your lives, um, uh, of your life. I'm very, very grateful and very proud of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Florence. 
and bio and you're also quite an inspiration to me totally want to be like you <laughs> you're a role model and i like that you also integrate you know mental health and music which is amazing your creative talent which has helped me also going through this journey this creative talent of yours singing <laughs> it's always been a blessing to me thank you so much thank you thank you mm -hmm. I see okay. Dorothy's hands. Okay, I can see another hand. Maybe we can give the last one a chance to give the remarks before we move on. Hi, all. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm the one who is supposed to. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Hi Joyce. <laughs> um, Hi. Well, uh, <laughs> good to see you in that gown. <laughs> And yeah, I'd like to say congratulations on your graduation. And you've been very inspiring, even to those of us who are really not into your, in your discipline uh, as an academic, as a person. So that, that, it was really inspiring to see how you, you worked hard and you are consistent in what you are doing and you really persisted. So congratulations, that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yet another musician. I think some of that musicality is what made me not drop out. Thank you for taking me for so many treats, <laughs> musical treats. <laughs> Thank you so much, Muchere, um, my musical friend. <laughs> okay. Okay, this time we can also or anybody who is alive at this time. Or even Okay. This is the Before we proceed to the keynote speech by our guest, Dr. Wagari. Uh, sorry, did you say that anybody else who would like to speak can speak? I didn't hear you very well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know who hasn't said anything. Who would like to say something? Me. Yes, Karugo, welcome. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you very much for this invite and congratulations, Daktari. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm a psychology student at Kenyatta University. I am also very passionate about healing well, introducing African psychology into the psychology that we learn in school. And Dr. Wangari here has been at the forefront of uh, hosting conferences and hosting these discussions and uh, even mentoring young people like myself to, you know, have an idea to chart this new path in psychology. And this is the psychology of the future. One of my favorite thinkers is uh, Thomas Sankara. And Thomas Sankara says that we need to have the courage to invent the future. And uh, Dr. Wangari here is an embodiment of a lady with courage, a lady who invents the future. And uh, today as she graduates, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of her. And I see a great future in psychology and in Kenya and in the whole of Africa. In her, I see the type of women I hope to deal with in my therapy office. My goal is to empower not just men, but also women. I hope women to become like in Dr. Wangari here. So even in my office, I can have people, I can tell them to embody, you know. So congratulations, Dr. Wangari, and uh, keep doing what you do. Keep being yourself. I hope Wamekusemea five, ah, the four ululations. <laughs> it's good that they say them to you because uh, I've forgotten what one meant, but I know one meant wished you prophecy so you're able to see into the future and so you're able to invent it the other wished you wealth otoga so i wish you plenty of wealth and uh, and wealth is not just financial wealth is also wealth of your heart and wealth of your mind may you never lack especially those that cannot be seen materially so it is a pleasure to be here and i hope to continue working with you. So you teach me how to write papers and do a lot of research because that is where I want to venture into. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karugo. You are such an inspiration, especially in the field of indigenizing 
uh, mental health and uh, look forward to more work together. Uh, you've also been a great student leader. I've learned a lot of tips from you on student leadership and how to build student movements. So I appreciate your work in KU and beyond. And of course, your athletics. I'm still trying. I'm trying to get into <laughs> being more active. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See a few more mentors who had uh, come in earlier, but then got kicked out over the Zoom. I'm not sure if I can still allow uh, our MC, uh, James. I don't know if I can still allow somebody to say something. <laughs> I'd like to invite her. Uh, yeah. You can give them a minute each. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd like to invite Alamin Kemati. If you'd like to say something, I've sent you a prompt to unmute and a mentor in the Utu conversation. I'm not sure if his internet is working because he was here then. Now he's back. Can you get him? Oh. Hey, Welcome. Please unmute. Volume could be louder. Could you come closer to the Oh, the audio is still poor. Oh, unfortunately. So. We come back, <laughs> maybe. Can you hear me oh, now? Oh, there. We can hear you now as my mentor in Utu conversation. <laughs> Please unmute your audio kindly. I'm also just seeing all the messages. Thank you so much. So I'm not sure if uh, anybody else can hear and I mean. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, is there a match? Hello, can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I, I think we can now proceed. Yeah, we, we so much wanted to let that 
mentee to give their remarks, but unfortunately, I think the network failed. So I think we can proceed. Dr. Wagari, are you here? Dr. Wagari, are you here? Now, before, before she's back, if anybody else would like to give the uh, remarks, maybe a friend or just we you can take the floor. Was anybody saying something? Okay, I think if I saw other remarks, that is I'm just a guy who gave a speech. So what for be looking up? We have the image this screen. Looking upon that speech, because you know, you know yourself that the one who has the one who is the other person to give us your experience, your word of encouragement. So, anything is wrong. Thank you so much, uh, our MC James Hope, for that. And I would like to say, I have never given a graduation keynote speech, but I'd be happy to share my exhilaration, my excitement, you know, my hope with you. So that I hope that at the end of my little speech that you are inspired. I have been telling myself that, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I have been telling myself that you now it still feels a little surreal because our past decades have been very transformative. There's been a lot of change in my life in ways I can't explain. So, but seeing you just uh, uh, assures me that it is real. It is actually happening. I just remember it really emotional was when the diploma was being lifted from the table and it was being handed to me. That was quite symbolic for me because that has been a moment I've been really waiting for. So my doctorate degree is a practitioner scholar model. It's not a PhD, it's a PSYD. It involved a whole line of coursework for several years. Then we went in for a full year practicum and then a full year internship and then a full year doctorate. So it's one of the most intensive uh, doctorate degrees in the region. Some doctorate degrees, as you know, have different requirements like only research, you know, or research and coursework, but ours not only had coursework and research, but also the internship and the practicum. And on top of that, we also had a crowning um, comprehensive exam. That was quite an experience. I remember that was quite a defining moment in our degree program because you're just completing coursework and there's this really comprehensive exam that covers all of the coursework uh, just before you enter the final year where you advance to candidacy and beginning the research project. So essentially there were like three things going on in that transition. You are just trying to memorize all of the things as much as possible from your coursework for this exam and then you're getting ready to look for an internship site, okay? And at the same time, you are panel beating your idea and, and nominating who you think from the faculty could be your research supervisor. So I just remember that being a lot of transition going on and just feeling stretched and stretched. And doctorate is one of those things that don't need high intelligence. Uh, one of my great mentors, Professor Selvam, will say that. <laughs> and he's so funny. He says, you know, the doctorate, doesn't test intelligence in your head, but intelligence in your seat. How long can you sit down for? That is about tenacity. How can you be like a dog to a bone and 
just hold on to something and not letting it go. So I just remember that was overall my experience. The other analogy that I can give for the entire uh, journey was like a sieve. I felt like I had to really funnel out, sieve out, filter out a lot of things. And I was sifting through many pages as our elder sister Mombi was saying that I've always loved reading. And that commitment and dedication to actually choose the most important points out of a, a text. So in essence, the process just made me a better reader. I can start and finish a book because I now have the skills to deliver critical thinking, you know, and reading and things like that. And now I understand when they say that you're given the power to do all that appertains to your degree after you graduate. So I've had the privilege of amazing mentorship. I've also been really privileged to have wonderful and caring peers. I can see them here. They're joining. They're always supporting. We've had a really strong, you know, a student group because the success of one of us is the success of all of us. I can say that um, my work also um, made me in touch and connected with the deaf community. I was really humbled to learn a lot of what was going on with a group that has been uh, disenfranchised, oppressed for a long time. And for me to contribute my voice felt like not just an academic piece, but I was getting civically engaged, okay? So when, during many ceremonies, when, you know, people give speeches and call on graduates to be civically engaged is to actually create scholar activism, which is what I felt I did. And this incredible piece of knowledge around, you know, the relationship between depression and psychosocial support concerns was also quite emotive. One of the things I recall when collecting my data is that I wasn't just picking data. I wasn't just mining data from the deaf community and taking it away. These were actually people's lives. And I have met some participants down the road and they used to give me updates about their family and you know, because they felt that they were speaking to me that time when I was collecting data and now they're meeting me again. So it's just natural that they tell me, you know, how they're doing now in relative to how they were doing when I was doing the data collection. And that was really a very humbling experience of joining in a, a big movement in the disability and social justice movement in talking about how we can make our society more equitable. So that really scholarly journey distinguished me in the sense that I also felt emotionally connected to the topic. I still remember many times collecting the data and going home and crying. I also remember many times, you know, wanting to type out the data and I'm just like exhausted because I used to do, especially the data collection over the weekends when I was out of, um, you know, working hours. But I still remember many times feeling depressed, not knowing what to write and like literally powering my computer and then powering it off and just going back to bed many times. So this idea of starting and stopping, just like we've all fallen and risen, you know, you make a fortune, you lose a fortune, you know, you feel uh, defeated, you feel you know, successful after a little, you know, success. And I used to reward myself by taking some long walks. I got this idea from my professor actually, who's here, <laughs> Dr. Brown, to take some long forest walks. You know, she would talk about her forest walks. And I said, oh my goodness, this is what I need. And, you know, just movement and, and, and coping better by, by taking a break, taking a complete break from all of this. At some point, you know, it got a little bit draining. You've exhausted every, crook and nanny, every single piece of evidence you think you can get in your writing. And so it, it's like, there's nothing else to say at this point, I'm saturated. So I'll take that as a key moment to just, you know, reflect, take a break, um, go on a sort of a leave and come right back. And sometimes I would go on a leave and come right back to a bunch of comments, you know, <laughs> from my supervisor. So there was always this dance where, Sometimes you're sitting in limbo, you're waiting for, you know, uh, comments. And meanwhile, you're on a break and then you've got to come right back. So there was a flow, an ebb and a flow inside of this uh, research process. And I must say, it's been quite, it's been quite real. It's been
been quite a real process. So I also would like to acknowledge um, a few people uh, or groups of people, starting with, of course, my professors and my research assistant, one of whom was here earlier, spoke, uh, I think he's still here, Joseph Etienne. Yes, my brother is still here. Then I had another one, Rehab Mombi. They did an amazing work. They were my community gatekeepers. They advised me on how to go about data collection. I had a big city and a small town. So Nairobi and Kajiado, and, they, and uh, particularly Baraza said, oh, it's better you start with Kajiado and then end up with Nairobi in order for you, you know, um, to collect the data with integrity and have, you know, members of the deaf community participate without necessarily having met each other before, you know, seeing the study. So um, I'm seeing a lot of your comments, but I think I'll respond later. So I'm liking, um, this interaction. Then there, there is another bunch, uh, which was comprised of all the professional editors, statisticians, librarians that I consulted, a host of scholars that I just needed to bounce off ideas with, including to, uh, including even my classmates. They were my first peer reviewers, my sisters, all of them, all my three sisters were my peer reviewers. And I was really fortunate to have a family that values my intellectual journey, one of the things my family did, I have a huge family that's very close and connected, very active, is that they just replaced me in the family meeting. This was not easy, especially because family meetings happen over the weekends, just when my classes were happening. And at some point I could have easily come across as a snob because I was not MIA, I was missing in action. I was just not available for my family meetings over time. And so I realized that I got really, really busy in the sense that my responsibilities increased. And at the same time, my time became limited and my family just stepped in and just covered up all of that. Uh, obviously financial challenges as well. At some point I had to sell off some part of my family inheritance land <laughs> in order to pay school fees. And these are the sacrifices that many people, especially people in the, labor um, economy who do manual jobs may not appreciate about those of us who actually live off intellectual work okay so those of us in the service industry who live off our brains and this is the work we do we do a lot of brain work you know and sometimes it's it's not easy to convince somebody who you know works with their hands that this other work is also important there's a lot of unseen work you know, when you're a teleworker, right now you're all online, there's something pending somewhere because you're sitting here in Zoom with me, you know, and when you're an online, uh, you know, worker or a student, uh, there's an invisible, um, you know, contribution to economy that you make, you know, and that we can see very visible and tangible effects later on. But that was not easy, like to have somebody say, you know, for instance, oh, you're just sitting around at your laptop, especially during COVID days, we would sit around our laptops, look like we are doing nothing, but a lot was going on, you know. <laughs> and so uh, there's still a lot of sensitization that needs to be done around what it takes for, you know, a student to get through their journey. And so part of my, you know, uh, other blessing was to meet peers who we could start a community with. And I realized that there was already existing communities where scholars were meeting. So the other person I'd really like to thank is Aurelia Monene. She had already started for a whole year before I joined um, the Ada Africa Research Journal Club, which is actually hosting our meeting today. And she did a phenomenal job of convening scholars all across different universities. And we would, would just sit and commiserate and talk about our experiences. This is a very disruptive kind of a thing. This is a, an amazing experience that many students don't have in their specific universities, but that they can gain a lot from if, they come, if we come together from whichever level, whichever discipline, whichever university, we are in even country. Now we have scholars from across Africa and we will be expanding quite exponentially uh, because we even have people from different continents of the world and getting a space where people can just sit and just talk and share and really build each other was so energizing for me. I think I realized that I had 
a heart for helping others because I was helped. So it's more like what you've had before that to those whom a lot has been given, then a lot is expected. Therefore, for me, it was just paying forward. When I've received a lot, I'm really, truly standing on, you know, shoulders of giants. Therefore, I can see far, not because I myself can, but because I really have been privileged with really a wonderful foundation. So I'd, I'd really like to thank the Ada Africa family, most of whom I can see here today. <laughs> then obviously um, this speech is basically an elongated vote of thanks. My parents are both scholars. They were all uh, university lecturers. One of the things I, I remember is that I pitied, I pitied my, 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 my father and my mother because they would sit long hours at night just marking a lot of work at the university and I knew that uh, this was not nice because they would be awake when we would be asleep and they had such integrity they would never cook grades they would mark each and every script you know they had large classes they would teach halls and halls of students and I just felt like for all the work they did they were not appreciated enough I had this sense you know growing up that um, you know teaching was one of the very noble you know professions but I've been very fortunate to combine a lot of their acumen and their blessing uh, um, by just observing them in the teaching space with the work I do now in consultancy, where I can actually walk through people uh, using research mentorship skills uh, and actually combining that whole space of teaching, you know, clinical work, which I do very, I, I love doing, it's very fulfilling for me. And then, and then obviously, um, research mentorship so uh, my parents have been you know fire blazing uh, in a lot of ways and making me who I am because I am a daughter of a farmer and a musician so I have a lot of the sciences and a lot of the arts combined and I think psychology combines science and arts it's one of those fields which is both a science and an art really so um, because psychology is about the study of the brain and human behavior and we describe explain predict and control behavior. And with those four goals, we are actually doing a lot of service to humanity. So in both the scientific aspects and you know, and in the and in the artistic way, we, we bring together people and and have them heal. And therefore I would say, you know, my parents were instrumental in shaping me in that way. And then there is uh, the larger scholarship body, uh, uh, organizations, parastatals, um, authorization bodies like NACOSTI, which allowed me to actually proceed with my, with my research. And obviously governmental institutions, the Q, the WASC. We did a lot of um, reviews and feedback, you know, even to the national bodies as we went along as groups of students experienced in the research journey. There's been a lot of challenges for most students um, some of these have ended up in court, sadly. A few other students have dropped out. There's been a lot of attrition. And then COVID pand pandemic obviously hit us. And that was like a complete, um, you know, um, appending, or we were turned upside down. Uh, there was a complete appending of whatever we thought was a normal life. And therefore, um, having gone through a lot, including an entire pandemic, uh, I would say that I'm really, really thankful uh, to have reached this point this time. And this is definitely not the end. I'm going to be proceeding. I'm looking for work. I'm looking for postdocs. I'm looking for you know, opportunities to grow. I am also creating my legacy projects now. Um, I believe I am towards the middle or end of my career. I've been in my career for 16 years now. And I'm now very interested in growing the next generation with a number of platforms that I run, uh, daily job groups and, you know, um, Humor for Resilience, which is another platform I love to go to, just uh, to unwind, <laughs> that I co-created with Mary Kitaka, who is here. And um, I would like to see more of, especially the transformative work around disability and mental health. I think that one I'll be entering into more and indigenizing mental health. So I'd like to see a lot more African mental health um, inventions uh, actually being 
given recognition. They're there, they're just not recognized enough. So I think that's where, you know, my efforts will be lying going forward. There's a lot more humanitarian work I do. I prefer to combine philanthropy with business. And so therefore uh, I'll be looking to all of you to see what can we do in whichever sphere, whether it is paid and paid. Uh, a, a lot of our work is now getting structured. There are very exciting times in Kenya now with the, with the board just being newly promulgated and now they're just setting up structures in the board and I'll be waiting to hear, very, very curious to hear how that space will go in terms of regulation of our practice so that there is a lot more sanity in how we go about our work. So I'll be happy to do a lot more clinical supervision trainings as well. And obviously I'm working with the deaf community to now see how we can translate this huge 233 page dissertation of mine into more palatable video, um, um, video stories or uh, hopefully with some funding, get some sustainable project that actually makes a difference in people's lives. Aside from just awareness creation in the deaf community, we need to do the real work of empowering the deaf people themselves, you know, in terms of health equity and mental health empowerment so that we don't have to be talking about inequality and writing about it. And then nothing is actually getting done on the ground. So those are some of my pet projects that I'll be happy to, to, to delve into. And I think a few people talked about me being quite sp spread across different things that I'm doing. I think that's the beauty of being in consultancy. Uh, you can almost operate like a Dukawala, you know, the one that has an m -Pesa and sells also uh, uh, some Panadol headache <laughs> medication. And also you have, you know, Unga right there. And consultancy gives me that broader space uh, while academic, you know, got me to focus and deepen one single particular area, but in consultancy now I'm widening um, in scope. And so it's going high and wide and I'm loving it. And uh, now let me tell you just a little bit about our foundation, Guira Foundation, as I finish. So this is a legacy project in 2020, that uh, 2020 February, that started uh, with me and a filmmaker. And we are now, um, quite familiar with the tragedies of uh, those in the creative industry in Kenya. And in the creative industry, filmmakers are really handling high stress levels, as we've always known. But now I think the recognition is quite clear about what's going on. So we've, we had already been doing a lot of informal work with people in the creative industry, but now we wanted to just formalize and systematize it. And so we were really happy to come together and Wira Foundation um, provides psychology and film for behavior change communication. And so Kezia would have wanted to join us today. She's my co-founder of my um, foundation, but she was not here. We give back to the community a lot and we haven't launched our company. That might be something coming up soon. As soon as our website is up, we're still finishing up on that. And so that the launch will be complete. And I'll be looking for a lot of partnerships. There's a lot of wonderful work to be done. And in the fields of mental health, psychology, counseling, you know, disability advocacy, humanitarian service, you know, um, I think that would be amazing. So I'm, I would like to end my speech, keynote speech as our MC <laughs> calls it, and, and also invite some questions. I see some comments and questions in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that keynote, the keynote speech. I believe everyone is attending as I was listening to everyone as we can as it improve. So this time, if there is anybody has a question, maybe we can give them a to ask as we go without. Anybody who has a question. start with the ones in the chat i'm just going to share my uh, link i know that <laughs> i know that uh it will be put up in my university library soon i was speaking to the librarian and they said that they will be putting it on the e-repository because all the approvals were done and now 
it's ready to go into the e-repository of USIU. But I just put the Google Drive link because I got a question from my high school deskmate, <laughs> Helen. She says that I talk about my study in details. I'm not trying to bore you with the entire study, 233 page on that link. But um, just if you want to see, you can see it. It was um, about the relationship between psychosocial support concerns and depression in deaf adults uh, in Nairobi and Kajiado County. I'd spoken about it a little bit earlier, but it's basically about mental health of the deaf in Kenya. So that was what my research was about. But as I said, my program did not just have a research component only. We it was that was the tail end. We had coursework comprehensive exams, and then we had a full year practicum, full year internship, and then a dissertation. So um, it was supposed to be, you know, maximum five years or minimum three and a half years because it's quite a rigorous program, not like any other. Uh, and yeah, I see some questions here that are quite relevant. Uh, let me see from the beginning. <laughs> so I see, um, Lots of congratulations, thank you so much. And then um, I just wanted to say there's a question here. Oh no, there's a comment from Baraza Joseph Etiang. Congratulations on your well-merited prosperity and proud of you. I believe the disability community, especially the deaf community will have access to psychological services because in Kenya we have 65% of the deaf facing a lot of depression because of life challenges yes i agree uh baraza there's a lot of uh still needs to be done we've just scratched the surface we hope that we can translate you know academia into practice and the challenge of being a disability practitioner is that you find that you're the one designing and you're the one implementing a lot of things and we we've, we've tried to make some inroads we've worked quite closely with the ministry of health and uh i see my colleagues here who we did an entire first ever national mental health conference in 2019. So we hope to have more such initiatives quite consistently so that there's more, uh, you know, work in that space. So there's a question, what do you think about a Kenyan psychological society similar to Kenyan law society or a Kenyan school of psychology where people have to sit for a difficult exam to be admitted to the bar of psychology? This is actually very common practice in all medical cadres. Uh, the nurses will tell you of an exam they have to sit, the doctors, the clinical officers, there is psychologists across the world doing the same. So this is very normal. Uh, and I see my professor has answered quite accurately. It's like a licensing exam. Yes, uh, in many states in the US, you get licensed and they use the word license in front of your title in order to distinguish you as a person who's actually sat the licensing exam. And if you do not pass the licensing exam, then you are not fit. That's the reason is because there are a lot of new inventions in the field of psychology every single day. So therefore you have to prove that you are competent, you know? So uh, my professor hopes that that will be implemented in Kenya. I hope so too. I think that it's high time we now started checking competence of practitioners. And I think the board will have that most definitely. I mean, we are now in the very famed CBC uh, curriculum, which is competency-based, meaning everybody can excel at their level. That's what that, in a nutshell means, and that even if you do not have a diploma, let alone a degree, you can still you know, be useful in the economy at that level. Of course, you can always bridge up the levels and you know, study and learn and things like that. So yeah, so I think that's wonderful. Somebody says, I missed what you said. The connection was disrupted. Don't worry, this is being recorded for the purpose of sharing with those who could not join us. I know internet is a challenge for many of us on a Saturday evening because everybody is online <laughs> watching many things. So, and we are sharing the bandwidth here. So thank you all for having joined. And there's uh, um, another one. What do you think about a psychologist oath stronger than the Hippocratic oath? I would like to see that. I'm curious to know more, <laughs> but I think that Nowadays, the Hippocratic Oath has been modified, if I'm not wrong, medics will correct me, to include that medics need to do self-care. So the Hippocratic Oath, as it was, never included a part of self-care, but now 
I see that. And I think we do need one for psychologists because we definitely uh, do a lot of work giving. We are givers. We are uh, mostly helpers. Therefore, I think an oath uh, similar to the Hippocratic oath would be something really interesting, you know. And this one on um, congratulations, how, how long did you do your doctorate? How, what were some of the challenges you went through and how would you advise people facing the same challenge? Thank you so much for that question. So as I said earlier, my doctorate uh, was designed to be maximum five years and minimum, um, minimum it was supposed to be um, three and a half years. However, my doctorate ended up being nine years. This is the ninth year. So I was on the maximum time allowed by Commission for University Education. And we were getting, we were just about to get warning letters that if we proceeded beyond nine years, we would have to start again because that's what Commission of University Education has set forth as a guideline that no student should take more than nine years. So I was really at the maximum time. And I would say the biggest challenges were at the individual level. I had some major losses in the family that were of really close family members that had me take some time out of school in order to grieve, mourn and recuperate, you know, emotionally, financially. And then I would say there were also some uh, teething problems in our program, just like many other, you know, programs that were finally smoothened out. And I would say the combination of individual challenges and systemic challenges sometimes would compound together. And I would feel you know, disheartened. And I must say it was just because I could locate a mentor and I could actually access them and they were available for me that I managed to just pick myself up. So almost it's like a game where you've got to somersault and end up always back on your feet, you know? And even if you're thrown off course many, many times, there were many, 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 many um, times when, you know, there's a shiny object passing by so for instance, you've committed to school, you know you've paid school fees, you're doing this research thing, and then a nice job over comes up and you know that that will disrupt the entire um, you know, <laughs> uh, routine of research work. As you know, in our context, a lot of research work, for instance, is um, time limited, maybe because of funding. And so the dilemma was actually how often I could say no and I learned to be better at saying no to a lot of the things that were great to do, but not appropriate at the time. And a lot of the things that were taking away my attention from the main thing, you know. And it was not easy. It's not, a com it's not an easy thing. It was quite complex to choose, you know. Should I say yes to this and yes to this also? And sometimes, you know, juggling all of these roles, especially in caregiving tasks as a mother, as an auntie, you know, as a spouse, as a sister, you know, as a daughter, that was quite something. And uh, gender roles, somebody mentioned gender roles in academia. They are quite distinct and they are quite an issue because um, for instance, women take up the bulk of uh, the household chores, even if, you know, members of any household, whether men or women, might verbally say they would assist, you know. At the end of the day, women have that inordinate burden. So I would like to salute all the women here who are actually doing the work of raising communities, literally, as well as doing the work in our field of psychology as well. So it's not easy. Uh, it's one of those things that required a community effort and to rally people behind understanding what it was and, and then going beyond understanding to accepting, right? Those two things are very different. Somebody could intellectually understand, but may not accept over time the implications of, you know, having a student or in your life where all the time, you know, you're actually in a Zoom room or you're finishing an assignment or, you know, you're taking all of these moments away from, you know, family time. And that is quite a sacrifice. And if somebody doesn't get, you know, the overall peace, then, um, you know, from time to time, it was problematic. But I would say that um, because of the wonderful support from my family, I actually managed uh, to do things. And I think the best form of self-care is the one in the Utu way, whereby you can say that I don't stress it. Somebody else can actually just do it for me. You know, when I can truly say 
that somebody can carry my load for me and I can go and take a rest. I think that's the true well-being that we are all here for and, and that we need to strive for. So I enjoyed that many times, many times delegating, as I said earlier, family meetings, especially those, those I could tell you, there was a day I literally could see my social life getting out of the window. <laughs> literally like you know of course i'm being metaphorical and all but literally i could just literally see because i could i could see a lot of the work that was in the library like just taking up all of the social life and i would try to uh create people who would make sure that i have a social life and they get me out of the library and get me you know uh taking a break at the time when i said i would take a break and with that, I was able to schedule a lot of things. At some point, actually, my self-care was the only thing making me sane. There was a point where, you know, forest walks, you know, cycling, walking, running was the thing I was doing to stay alive. In fact, I was just staying alive for that, you know. <laughs> I would like endure everything else and then, oh, okay, time for my forest walk. Now I can be alive, you know. So therefore, that is, you know, that is what I'd have to say about the challenges. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for answering those questions. So, thank you again, our chief guest, for that keynote speech. It's very informative, inspirational, encouraging, and a heart touching speech of which we look up to. We as mentees. One day we shall also be able to give such a speech to other people. So I say, Jenny, that we just we are just ahead of you, following you every step that you make. You are watching so that we can learn from you. I would also like to thank everyone for your time and patience in this graduation virtual ceremony and for honoring our invitation to grace this occasion. So feel so much appreciated. We esteem all of you. Thank you everyone who shared your, your remarks here. You have really made this occasion colorful. And at, at this time, I would wish to request you, if you haven't sent your gift, maybe to Dr. Joyce Wagari in appreciation, for, for her achievement, you can still do so. And also, if you haven't sent your message of goodwill or wishing her well, you can still do so. And if you still have questions, I believe she can be able to answer them as we proceed. So at this time, uh, I think we have come to the end of the session, unless there is something I, it has been a wonderful time. You have been fine, such fine company. And it's, it's been gracious to have you here with me today. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I don't know if anybody else has anything to say as we finish. If there is, if there is no other remark, I think it is in order. If we can allow our guests to live their own pressure. And we can also take this distance, maybe to take a gallery screenshot uh, so that you may remember this. And also the video has been recorded, it can be shared. But so I don't think there is much left for us unless someone has something to tell us. Yeah, thank you. And I will okay, uh, this is this recording for the six.
All right, I think I can stop recording then. <laughs> Thank you.